is your moment. Don't tell me how bad you want it. Prove to yourself how bad you want it. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let nothing get in your way. Every day you wake up, every day you breathe, you should be improving yourself. You should be taking steps to reach your destiny. Don't let nothing stop you. It's your moment. It's your time. How bad do you want it? Do you let's go, let's go, let's go. It's your man Mike Bowens coming to you once again live and direct from unleashing the creativity within you. I got a powerful message for you today. This message is more like a it's a question, it's a rhetorical question. You'll know the answer to it before uh, before I even finish saying it. And the title of this is entitled, Should There Be Competition in Your Relationship? Should There Be Competition in Your Relationship? Oh man, this is a powerful subject because there's so many couples who are in competition with each other. Now, when you think about love, love takes no right, it takes no, it doesn't look at one person and say, okay, I do, I'm doing better than you, or I'm smarter than you, or you should be happy to be with me because I'm really better than you, or, you know, let me get this information before you, or, you know, love, love is not like that. Love is not selfish. Love always gives. Love, love always hopes for the best. Love always wants to see the other person going higher and learning more and being their best and achieving more, right? And, and I've seen so many couples as I've been counseling couples over the years, I've seen competition in relationships. Listen, it doesn't matter how successful my wife is. It's us, it's together, we're a team. What happens good for her happens for me. And what happens good for me happens for her because we're one. And until we get that concept down that the two flesh shall become one, then you'll constantly look at yourself as an individual even though you're in a relationship. And you need to really, really get down to the nitty gritty of that, to the bottom of that and say, and have a heart to heart conversation with your spouse. Whether like I said before, through counseling, or having time for prayer with each other or reading books to help uh, renew your mind on the subject because um, there's so many uh, couples, like I said, who are constantly striving to be better than their spouse. And that's that's a that's a recipe for disaster. Because how can you how can you say you love somebody and you're trying to outdo them? How can you say you love somebody? See, what's really the issue there are some insecurities that you have or that person may have and it starts to come up to the surface when it, when it, when your spouse is, is starting to do things that maybe you're not doing, right? And so you got to let those insecurities go and say, this person is with me because of me, not because of um, things I can and cannot do, right? Though that, that that's, it kind of ties in. I mean, they're happy that you can do certain things, but that's not the reason why they're with you. And when a person is constantly competitive with you in a relationship, it can be very draining. As I've counseled folks, I mean, listen, one spouse was so drained. He just, he he, he just he said, I can't do it no more. Just ready to divorce because everything was competitive. Competitive, competitive, competitive. How much, how much money did you earn this month? Okay, yeah, I earned this much more than you. You know, you can step it up. You can do better. Um, yeah, I'm going back to school to get my degree. Yeah, get my master's. And you still have your bachelor's? Step it up. And he, it made him feel like it was always like he couldn't go home. His home was supposed to be his sanctuary. And he never felt like I could just come home and just relax. I could let down my guard. But he felt like he was sleeping with the enemy. He felt like he couldn't let his guard down because she was constantly coming at him. Likewise, I've counseled some people where, you know, a woman just wants to educate her mind and, and do better. And, she, you know, she may have come across some material or some video or, or, or books that she wants to read and educate herself, her spirituality, her mind to better herself. Her spouse is like, oh, what, what book you got there? And she tells him and he's like, you know, what? let me read the book first. And she's like, wait a minute, I'm just going to read this book. No, no, he's like, I need to read this first. So, you know, I, I, I know what's going on. 
Like that's some insecurities that's coming out of him as being projected upon her. Has absolutely nothing to do with her. And for a relationship to a rate, a rate oh, excuse me, a relationship to really thrive, there has to be a level of confidence that you have in one another and are able to drop your insecurities and say, you know what, I'm gonna put my best foot forward. This person is my support system. When I succeed, they succeed. When they succeed, I succeed. And together we're a great team. You know, my strengths may be my wife's weaknesses and my weaknesses may be her strengths. And that's how, that's how it's supposed to be. Imagine if you had two right hands. How would that, that don't, that don't make sense. Or two left hands. And no, no shade on anyone who ever watches this video who may have that um, situation going on. But what I'm trying to say is that you benefit each other, right? Don't try to be so controlling or possessive that you stifle the other person from growing because maybe you're not growing, right? Always grow and give the person that you're with the space to grow as well because then they can come back and add more to the table and together you could be a more powerful team, right? So this is my man, this is your man, Mike Bones. I wanna to say to you, let the competition die in a relationship. Let it die because together you can do more together than you can do apart, right? This is your man, Mike Bones, signing off. And until next time, I'm saying be blessed.